I don't really get hockey cards. I've never been much of a sports guy, so I never really saw the appeal. But if we applied this same idea to scientists and had like science cards, I would buy those for sure. I have been so lucky to get the chance to interview some of my science heroes, like Kevin Fulta and Pamela Ronald and Peter Diamandis. I collect interviews because nobody has invented science cards yet. And this week, I got the chance to collect another interview with one of my favorite science people, Dr. Harry Kluwer. So let me break this guy down for you. I'll give you his science card stats, as it were. Harry Doc Kluwer is the ultimate Renaissance man, scientist, film producer, director, writer, and like a super savvy entrepreneur. He's the first and still the only person to ever be awarded two PhDs at the same time in two different disciplines, chemistry and physics. Oh, and he's not like a scientist who aspires to be an artist as well. He's like a real legit artist. You can tell by his excellent on-camera technique. You can also tell by his credits on projects like Quantum Quest or Earth Final Conflict, and not to mention writing freaking Star Trek episodes. Six episodes of Star Trek Voyager. I mean, I was, I was geeking out hard. And if you were 10 in 1998 like me, you might even remember the animated Godzilla show. I watched it all the time. Doc Kluwer wrote for that too. And back in like science land, he was a founding member of the XPRIZE Foundation. He created the $22 million Avatar XPRIZE, also is a founding member of Singularity University and is currently working on a project called Beyond Imagination, which I can't say much about other than it really is beyond imagination. The world's gonna change in like major ways in the next 20 years and Dr. Kluwer is going to be right smack dab in the center of it. It was kind of like interviewing Eldon Tyrell or Peter Wayland. So I was a little starstruck, but I managed to get my head screwed on straight and I did a quick interview with him because one doesn't often get the chance to pick a brain of this caliber. I imagine that to a guy like this, we all sound like we're talking really slowly. So I wondered how he approached the task of communicating the science in his head to the rest of us normies. So in communicating uh, science, especially technical problems to the general public, uh, first I want to say that, that I think it's the responsibility of every technologist and every scientist to learn to be better communicators. Because I think a lot of the problems in society and misinformation, such as misinformation about GMOs, is because people don't really even understand technology. Now for myself, I was born with the good fortune of having a mother who wrote actually a science fiction book while I was in the womb. And so I started working, I mean, I started reading uh, science fiction when I was very young and learning to be a communicator. So, in fact, I started writing myself creative works uh, at a very early age. And I took actually a philosophical approach, which was you should develop your scientific part of your mind as well as your artistic part of your mind. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you should excel in each one of those and excel in something physical. So that may seem like a long lead up to the answer. The way you communicate complex ideas to the public is first of all, is to understand that there is no idea so complex that the public can't understand it. It's really your ego and the fact that you've climbed so high on a pedestal that you're looking down at people. So the way you communicate to them is to remove all the math, remove all the complications, and find a way in which it relates to them. So how does a guy like this deal with being on like an intellectual pedestal? How does he help us understand how he sees the future? Well, I, I actually never find myself on a pedestal because I already know I'm full of shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> now, PhD of course stands for piled higher and deeper. <laughs> I'm piled higher and deeper twice, uh, or, or, or squared. I love it when smart people are well-grounded. But even a brilliant and grounded guy like Dr. Kluwer is going to find himself occasionally rubbing up against people who are very distrustful of science and technology. So I asked him how he deals with the Luddite contingent in society. So in fact, uh, uh, there's both the Luddites and the people who think they're intellectuals. In fact, the Luddites bug me less than the people who are pseudo intellectuals. The, the people who think uh, that they know uh, how something should be. For instance, anybody who starts to talk about science and technology with the word believe, then they should just stop themselves because they actually, science isn't about beliefs, it's about the scientific method, it's about looking at actual data, it's not about injecting your emotion or your opinion. Mm -hmm. And by the way, nobody on earth, uh, there's no scientific group 
uh, that sits around and says, oh, let's take a vote, and now this is what we all believe. That doesn't happen, so whenever you hear those statistics, it's just a lie. And bringing this all around again to the topic of GMO. Look, are there some GMOs that, that could be bad for you? Sure. But, by the way, there's a lot of GMOs that are good for you. And, and is all organic good for you? For God's sake, no, it's not. So just because it's organic or just because it's GMO uh, doesn't make it good or bad. Use your mind. And the problem is, is most people are checking their mind at the door. So one of them is this discussions about GMO tomatoes. Now, I've done the necessary research to find out, is it, is it uh, perfect? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, but what I do know is that it's, it's something that should be examined uh, and not just thrown out because, oh, oh no, it's GMO. In fact, probably you couldn't feed the world right now if you were just using organic growing methods. You would have to kill off just a couple billion people. I think uh, certain genetic engineering of food does excite me to make things that are resistant that you can use less chemicals on it. People, People on one hand, oh, I want everything to be organic, but on the other hand, you want it to be not GMO. Well, uh, that might be good for you and then choose that. But there might be a billion people who need to be fed that that's not gonna work for. So I'm actually a humanist. I, I, I care about those people. I don't want something dangerous released into the world. But on the other hand, scientific method works and you can, you can build in safeguards for that. All right, a note to leave on. Is Dr. Harry Kluwer an optimist? And if so, why? Do you consider yourself an optimist? I am a complete optimist. Complete I believe optimist. that uh, the world is abundant, that we can solve all the problems, that there are less violence in the world, that there's more clean air and clean food and longevity is longer and, and you know, more likely your children are going to survive. And will the world be a better place 10, 20 years from now than it is now? Yes. And will it be better after that? Yes. And that's one of the reasons I've created uh, this uh, avatar revolution. I'm putting forward avatars because I think if you're a race locality, not only can I solve the world's, you know, the UN sustainability goal problems, but I can bring opportunity to everyone. I can bring education, healthcare, I can erase locality, and therefore, uh, and I think locality in some places brings great opportunities, and other places brings big disadvantages. But if I could work anywhere and help anywhere, uh, I will be able to solve a lot of the world's problems. And not me personally, but the world will solve its problems. Through his avatar technology, Dr. Kluwer is steering the world in a new direction, in a positive direction. Remember what I said about Eldon Tyrell and Peter Whelan? Well, at least in our non-science fiction version of reality, we've got pretty benevolent people like Kluwer at the helm. If science cards existed, I'd pay top dollar for this guy's rookie card. Now you know. <laughs>